Good morning. What's up, Raider Nation? I am the Commish, and this is your Raider Reaction Morning Show for November 21st. Thank you for joining me. I hope I hope your day has started out kick-ass already, and, and we can just help keep moving in the right direction. So there's been a lot of people, Raiders sitting at six and four, that have eaten, had to eat their words with all the smack they were talking in the offseason, through the preseason, beginning part of the season, how John Gruden would, didn't have the team going in the right direction, hadn't made the right moves, and one of those people was Colin Cowherd. He, he was chirping a lot in the offseason, and he's had to eat his words a little bit. Quite a bit here frequently. Quite a bit. I, mean, I think the Raiders right now do more well than the Kansas City Chiefs. The Raiders have allowed the second fewest sacks. Their offensive line's better. The Raiders are tied for fourth in giveaways with only 10. They don't turn it over. They're healthier than Kansas City. They run the football better than Kansas City. They've won five of their last seven, and they've gone up against teams like Chicago and pushed them around. This is a real Raiders team. I was totally wrong on it. Mike Mayock's done an unbelievable job between Richie Incognito, Trent Brown in the offensive line, between Josh Jacobs at running back, Hunter Refro, uh, Renfro, the wide receiver, the tight end from LSU, Darren Waller, the other tight end from Baltimore. They can play power football. They can be clever. They're incredibly efficient. Uh, ninth in offensive rushing, uh, you know, yards per game. So top 10, they'll pound it, eat the clock, Raiders 9. Everybody keeps talking about our rookie class. It started with Jacobs, Foster Moreau, Cleland Farrell, Max Crosby, Hunter Renfro. It just continues and continues. Is it? Is this draft class have the capability of reaching that level? I don't think we're the only one that's, that's seen that. And my dude this week is Mike Mayock, the right. general manager of the Oakland Raiders. If you go back to the NFL draft back in April when we were in Nashville, there were a lot of skeptics about that Raiders draft. Well, guess what? It might be the greatest draft class that we've seen in the last 10 years. And if you don't want to hear it from me, how about from one of the draftees himself? How about Josh Jacobs' tweet Sunday night? Best rookie class since... Mm. That I'm going to go to a team that hasn't had many bright moments in the last few years and a team that right now isn't enjoying quite a wave of momentum. And my dude this week is Mike Mayock, the right. general manager of the Oakland Raiders. If you go back to the NFL draft back in April when we were in Nashville, there were a lot of skeptics about that Raiders draft. Well, guess what? It might be the greatest draft class that we've seen in the last 10 years. And if you don't want to hear it from me, how about from one of the draftees himself? How about Josh Jacobs' tweet Sunday night? Best rookie class since. Mm. Mm. Okay, and then the numbers, do they back them up? Let's see how this rookie class is doing in the NFL right now. 2019 Raiders rookies, NFL ranks out of all the rookies this season. Are you serious? They're number one rookie class in rushing yards, number one in reception yards, number one in scrimmage yards, number one in scrimmage TDs, number one in sacks. So who are these guys and why are they so good? Let's see some of the names. Cleve Farrell absolutely dominated that Thursday night game against the Chargers. Josh Jacobs running away with Offensive Rookie of the Year. Trayvon Mullen had the game-winning interception last week. Max Crosby had four sacks last week. Foster Moreau had a touchdown. Hunter Renfro makes every big catch his team needs. And oh yeah, little print there. That's Jonathan Abram, who might be the best of all of them. Right. They've been on IR since week one. And Alec Ingold, who is a rookie, undrafted free agent, is their fullback and sets the tone. They get contributions from all of them. That man in his first NFL draft ever as a GM, that man in a draft where his first round picks were head scratchers to some in the draft media and the 100%. pundit world. 100%. They're cleaning up, and honestly, I look at these guys, they're not just flashing the pan, okay, it's because they're on the field. Like, Josh Jacobs is going to be a problem for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Max Crosby was a late-round pick. He's going to be a beast in this league. They can't find a way to block him. And then you look at just the, the certain level of play that they're getting from Trayvon Mullen out of Clemson, that they're getting out of Cleef Farrell out of Clemson. 
They drafted guys who performed in college and are performing right away in the pros. Here's Renfro making a big play. Guys, all Hunter Renfro ever did in college was make huge plays for Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. He's in the NFL. All he does is make huge plays for Derek Carr. Yeah, I don't know if this team's going to win the AFC West. I don't know if they're going to do anything past this week. I do know this. 12 weeks through the NFL season, there is no rookie class that is better than the Oakland Raiders one right now. And I know we love our Saints from a couple years ago and the Browns from last year. I would argue that this rookie class might be the best we've seen in recent memory. Hats off to Mike Mayock in his first year as the GM, first year with the organization coming from a TV booth. It's really unprecedented. Good stuff from the Raiders and great stuff from Mayock in that front office. Well said. I can't believe they're first in all of those categories as well, rookies. Isn't know. that wild, too, that like the two hottest GMs right now are quote-unquote TV guys and Mayock and Lynch? I mean, they're absolutely loaded. It's awesome. Will it go down November 17th? 2019 will it go down as the day the condor was born it was for mad max crosby the right end here it took him the third play of the game to leave a mark beating john jerry the left tackle with a double swipe the hand swipe and then the rip and then he turned the corner and he turned a corner like a giant condor on the move. He just jumps and leaps on Ryan Philly. He gets the ball out. He gets the ball out on the opening drive of the game. The condor. Watch this. Watch when he breaks free here. Watch him come out. The condor did. The umpire doesn't know what to do. He sees a giant condor coming at him. He doesn't know what to do. How do I get out of the way of a condor? Oh, what a day it was for Max Crosby. It was all phases of the game. Here he is over the tight end, Ozuma. Watch him just double, just what you call too gappy. He's inside here on Joe Mixon, and when Mixon bounces it outside, he's right there with DJ Swearinger. Swearinger goes low, and Crosby goes high. Mixon goes down for a one-yard gain. Crosby plays all phases of the game. How are you supposed to complete a pass against a condor on the loose? This is a bootleg. Matt Max is unblocked. Watch him put that wingspan up in front of Ryan Finley. How are you supposed to complete a pass over that? Like, this is the modern-day Mad Stork for the Raiders. But I don't want to take the Mad Stork. That was Ted Hendricks' name. This is the wild condor right here. Watch this play right here. Watch him come off the edge right now. Watch this rush. Bam. What it does is when Finley takes off out of the pocket, all John Jerry can do is grab him and hold him. He forces the holding call. The umpire takes the dish rag out of his back pocket, and he throws it. Ten-yard penalty for holding. Here we go. Watch this. This is what I love. This is just a quick little hitch to Joe Mixon. But watch Crosby. Watch the mentality he has. The ball's on the ground. Which player picks the ball up? Scoop and score! Scoop and score! That's what's next for Mad Max. Scoop and score! Get used to it. It's a mentality. Third and seven. The pesky Cincinnati Bengal hanging around when Max Crosby comes on on third and seven. It takes John Jerry. In fact, he lifts him up off the ground. Right there, John Jerry is off the ground. Look at the fit. The face mask onto the face mask. Give him a giant kiss right into the back of Ryan Finley. You don't get away from the giant arms of a condor. The giant wingspan of a condor. Down goes Finley. That was the second sack of the day for Mad Max. Not every great rush is met with a sack, but sometimes it's just a great rush. Like this play right here. He's just gonna rip right through the right tackle. Bobby Hart, bam, 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 bam. Look at that rip. Look at this. Look at the way he attacks. Bam, power. Now he gets off him. Look at that arm. Look at the condor's arm going after it. How did Finley even get away from that? The wingspan, a giant wingspan, like that of a condor. They complete that pass. How about this right here? First and 10, fourth quarter. Look at that shield, the Raider shield. You wanna run a bootleg to Max Crosby, you're crazy. You're not getting away from that wingspan. Wingspan takes him right down on the pirate, and that's what he is. He's a pirate looking for quarterbacks. That's his treasure, quarterbacks. How about this right here? How about this play? Look at it. They don't even block him right here. He just comes free. This has got to be a nightmare for Ryan Finley, making his second NFL start and seeing Crosby. Look at him. He can't, like, he can't get away from him. Everywhere he turns, there's Crosby. Give him a kiss. Then there was the fourth sack of the night. Fourth quarter, final two minutes of the game. The pesky Bengals hanging around, down 17 to 10. Gio Bernard chipping. Max Crosby says, all right, you want to chip me? I'll come right up the gut, right down Broadway, right after Philly. Philly tries to spin and turn, but he can't get away. And the ball's out. Look at, look at Crosby, crawling on his hands and knees, trying to get to the ball. Oh, he is a pirate. He's a raider. He's special. 
four sack afternoon. But he wasn't done. Came all the way down to the final play of the game. On the final play of the game, an interception by another rookie, Trayvon Mullen. But maybe Mad Max had something to do with this, with this rush and this chase. Who else is chasing Ryan Finley across the field? Mad Max Crosby is a giant condor, was an effective player all game long. 49 out of 63 plays, all the way to Trayvon Mullen's final interception of the day. Getting the Raiders to six and four and looking to play in January this year behind a bunch of young, hungry rookies. The Raiders are something to, to deal with right now. Well, we have had some solid D-bags of the day so far already from the hype team this week. And this is just a, a, a little nugget come my way today from one of our Raiderettes and... You, sir, are a fucking douchebag. D-bag of the day goes to people that go on to a Raider page and say, What's this page all about, bro? What the fuck? And now it's that time of the day where you get to, uh, we get to give you those little sports nuggets so you can flex your brain with, with your sports prowess and, and how much you know and, you know, your buddy around the shop or whatever. Hey, man, you know what happened today, man, in history? Do, do you know what the fuck happened today in sports history? What happened today in sports history on November 21st, 1902? Baseball's Philadelphia Athletics and the Phillies formed pro football teams and joined the Pittsburgh Stars in the first attempt at the National Football League. 1902. They attempted already. They had the vision of the greatness of what this game could be. 1902. In 1925, sticking with some NFL historical milestones, Red Grange plays his final game for the University of Illinois and then signs with the Chicago Bears. 1934, New York Yankees buy the rights to a young kid from the San Francisco Seals of the Pacific Coast League. That young man's name? was Joe DiMaggio in 1934. 1947, Bill Longson beats Lou Thies in St. Louis to win the National Wrestling Association World Heavyweight title. That NWA, baby. Oh, yeah. <gasps> yeah, I said it. The NWA. In 1965, an overflowed crowd of 76 thousand two hundred and fifty one jam the cotton bowl giving the dallas cowboys their first ever home sellout and then the browns beat them 24 to 17 in typical cowboy fashion 1972 red sox carlton fisk wins the al rookie of the year mets john matlock wins it in the national league on this day in 2004 the gray cup the CFL championship game took place in Frank Clair Stadium in Ottawa, Toronto. The Argonauts defeated the BC Lions, and this was the first Grey Cup that will be played on the next generation field turf surface and was not played on grass. That is what the fuck happened today in sports history on November 21st. And now we wrap up the show with the Raider quote of the day. The only yardstick for success our society has is being a champion. No one remembers anything else. John Madden. It's all about that ring, baby. You don't get that ring, you don't hoist that trophy, it doesn't matter. In the immortal words of Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're fucking last. You don't hoist that trophy, I don't give a shit. There's 31 losers every season and only one winner. Only one. Only one story's written. Only one NFL film story's made. That's it. Only one fucking matters. The rest of you, you're just fucking statistics in their story. Just a chapter. Just a paragraph in the story that is that champion. It's all about the wins. John Madden knew I was up. Hope you have a kick-ass fucking day, Raider Nation. And it's a fucking badass Silver and Black Thursday. Enjoy. I'll see you tonight. I'm out. Peace, love, Raider Nation.